Welcome back to the Sim Hangar, everybody. My name's Mark, and today we're looking at a freeware application available on flightsim.to called Color Panel. And what does it do? Well, it provides a window into the real world whilst you're in VR. And this video is all about how you use it, where it'll be useful for you VR pilots out there. And my full acknowledgement and thanks go to fellow flight sim colleague Russ Barlow. Russ Barlow has over 23,000 hours flying in the real world and is a true VR enthusiast. Many thanks for bringing this to my attention. He's done a video on this. I'll leave a link to that in the notes below. And my thanks, of course, to the developer Spitice for providing the VR community with this very interesting tool. Setup is simple and straightforward. It utilizes the color pass-through of your VR headset in conjunction with the pass-through chroma key function within Virtual Desktop, and you can use it with OpenXR. I'm using it with my favorite VR headset at the time of recording, and that's the Quest 3. We'll have a quick look at the setup, but it's easy to do, and it's quick. Setting up color panel for VR is fairly straightforward. If we bring up the menu quickly, we go to Streaming, VR Pass-Through, we need to make sure that's enabled. We select Configure, and we need to set Red to 128, Green to 0, Blue to 128 to give us the uh, purple color, and it recommends similarity at 1 to 2%, and smoothness set at something in and around 10% or thereabouts. So I'm using the Quest 3 and I'm using OpenXR. So we can just go ahead now and start Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I'll see you once we're in the sim. Hi everybody, welcome to the sim. As you can see, I'm in one of my favorite aircraft. It's the Wilga from Got Friends, an amazing stall aircraft. Let's quickly jump into the cockpit and I'm going to bring up the top toolbar. That's the icon we're looking for there, color panel. Select that and it opens. You can see here that uh, red 128, green 0 and blue 128 matches exactly what I've had in virtual desktop. So that's all good and working fine. There are a number of options available. You can uh, change the shape of the window that you're looking through. I'm going to close that. Now what you're looking at there, let me just move this, is you're actually looking at my monitor. As you can see, there's the edges of my monitor. That's the monitor that you're looking at. And you can see that purple square through there. That's what it actually looks like um, on the physical monitor itself. This is my window into the real world and out of VR, if you like. So let me drag it over here. So I've now dragged it over the uh, Bravo Throttle Quadrant and using a mouse, you can use a controller, but I find uh, using a mouse is uh, far easier. It maintains an orientation to where your headset is, but I can change the size of the window at any time. And uh, here you can see it's a Bravo Throttle Quadrant. I can see my hand. see all the different switches. In terms of resolution, since the most recent uh, Quest 3 update, they've improved the resolution or the clarity, not quite sure what it is, of the Quest 3 in pass-through mode. And uh, I can read, for example, up, down, gear. Um, these are not quite clear the uh, autopilot buttons. If I lean forward, I can now see them clearly. I know what they are anyway. I can see that this says GA go around. I can see exactly where my flap levers are. It's, it's perfect. 
if I just wanted to control that but didn't want it visible all the time, felt it might ruin the immersion for example, I could just simply close it. Bring it back again if I wanted to. Manipulating this window is more of a challenge. I find it easier with the mouse. So if I just click here, I find I get an element of your. That's probably more practical and so on. But I've got other instruments, etc. Now up here, I've got my iPad with a root on. If I wanted to refer to that, I need to lean in slightly, but I can now see all the frequencies. Bravo Chelta, Charlie Delta is on 115.50, India Oscar Oscar is 116.30 and so on. So it's not totally clear, it's almost readable uh, for me, but if I lean in pretty good. To a large degree perhaps, if I had writing of that size in the cockpit, the clarity would be more or less the same. And the beauty, of course, is you can look away and that particular mirror stays exactly where it is, which is very helpful indeed. Again, if I wanted to, I could just minimize it, bring it back and so on. If we have a look here, for example, I've got my GNS 530, just resizing the window and you can see my yoke here unfortunately but again I can read all of those use the dial obviously it's not plugged in I've also got just as an example wind wings very very nice FCU for the A320 there we are and again, Autopilot 1, Autopilot 2, Auto Thrust, Localizer, Expedite, Approach and so on. So again, positioning it can be a little bit tricky, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. I actually probably want to move that down slightly. As you can see, it's just sitting on top of my yoke here. So very handy, uh, great feature. Another option you've got perhaps is uh, we could have it maybe over there, it's against the wall there, but uh, maybe I've had a clearance and I needed reminding, so this is just a notebook. I can see it's a Canop 4P standard instrument departure squawk 4782, runway 04, so on and so forth. So again, fairly handy feature if you want it. It's not the answer to mixed reality at this time. Let me just hide the top toolbar. But it's certainly a step in the right direction. Parking brake off. A little bit squally today. Of course the Wilger gets up in absolutely no time at all. We're up. Come back. I don't want to overstress it and we're up and away flying about I just want to have a quick look I can just select the spot bring up my Bravo if I need to maybe use the autopilot or whatever the case may be depending on what you've got enabled but it's certainly heading in the right direction now the developer says there's more work to be done on this although I see the last update was November 23 but I hope he's still working on this so that we can save the panel position because every time you open it you lose every time you start a new session I should say you lose the position of it option to control the yaw a little bit more it's going to be a fantastic option for uh, flight training it's going to be a fantastic option for flight simming in general quite honestly and I look forward to seeing what sort of developments we get from this anyway guys I hope you found this useful and informative stay well look after yourselves 
and I'll see you all again very soon.